the motto I always use is like kind of like the path may be pretty rocky, but the destination is certain, which is like if the team wins, the best player is going to win. So maybe that means like, let's say Jokic has like a just an okay game one and game two, and Michael Porter Jr. plays great. Then you might actually see some like a pretty reasonable amount of separation between Porter. Uh, his price to win uh, uh, finals MVP, Jokic's price to win finals MVP, and the Nuggets to win the series. Like you might actually start to see, you know, Denver's minus 250, but Jokic's minus 120 to win finals MVP or something like that. You might see like that much separation. We saw with the Celtics in the last series where like Tatum's price to win conference finals MVP was way more than the Celtics price to win the series halfway through the series. So it's a market that's very rarely fun at the beginning. It's like when you get to this point, it's like never fun, uh, but it's something that can get a little obscured as we go through the series, because I, I honestly think this happens not every year, but it happens a lot where the best player maybe doesn't just like kill it in game one. And then you somehow start to see the separation. It's like, well, wait a minute, if they win, it's still going to be this guy. Like you kind of have to just trust that it's going to be that guy because it almost always is. It tends to be a little bit of a more fun market sometimes during the series especially if like a second third fourth best player gets off to a good start denver about minus 400 to win the series at bet mgm miami about plus 310 if someone out there wanted to bet miami to win the series or wanted to bet denver to win the series and lay that price which not suggesting that people do that and lay minus 400 with denver but if you wanted to do that and just bet denver to win the series does wouldn't it just make more sense to bet Jokic then bet Jokic minus 350 or if you wanted to bet miami to win the series rather than taking plus 310 at bet mgm take the plus 350 with jimmy butler is that is that fair to say to bet the best player as opposed to the team to win the nba finals here i mean i think i think to start with there's not a lot going on here, like just pre-game one. And so what you bring up is like, hey, there's a small difference between, you know, the Nuggets and Jokic. But I think that's like pretty easily explained by like a really small percentage of the time Jamal Murray's going to win. And like, he's actually like a reasonable player that can win sometimes a really small percentage of the time are really small, but it has to be in there. Like it can't just be the Jokic and the Nuggets are the same. There has to be some chance that Murray wins for the, for the heat. This is where it's like, well, I know Caleb Martin, like he got four votes last time. And like, that was, that was like the perfect setup to get someone that's not Jimmy Butler. And he still didn't lose. Like it was the perfect setup. And if they beat this team, like I, was Bam out of bio really like that's what that's what we're gonna try to sell. So again, you're it's we're we're splitting hairs here a little. It's like it, I wouldn't bet, but if you like the Heat, sure, I'd bet Butler to win Finals MVP instead. If you don't like either team, no, I wouldn't go bet Jimmy Butler to win Finals MVP just because it's different than the Heat price. Like you gotta, I would like the team too because it's such a small price difference. But the the fun thing is, and this is true with this market, this is true with. Uh, exact result like 4 0 Nuggets or 4 3 Heat or like the exact series things is true with all this stuff. You can really mix and match this stuff. So, first of all, every sports book has all of these open, which is like pretty cool. Like, you can go to 50 places and see the same thing. MGM has got all of them open too. And if you kind of mix and match prices, like, no, basically, no two places have the same price on any of this stuff. It's usually like five cents off, 10 cents off each way. You can create some bets. They're, they're not like plus EV bet or whatever, but it's a different way to play the finals than maybe people are thinking. So like, you know, do you want to like, instead of betting a team to win the series, do you want to kick the sweeps out? Like, do you think this is a series that likely ends up, and this is just going to be your personal opinion, you the person listening subjectively. Like, do you think this is a sweep? If you think the Heat win, do you think they ever win short? Or do you think they only ever win 6-7? So like betting Heat 6-7 is going to go a little bit better than betting Heat to win the series. If you like Denver, do you think a sweep is more likely? Do you think Denver wins a long series? Because, man, if it gets to game seven, like I, that's kind of my opinion on the series. If it gets seven, something went way wrong here for Denver if this got to seven. Like like there was a malfunction, and Miami's way live then at that point. And like that's not how I think the series is going to go. Maybe I bet Denver 4-1, 4-2. We have to welcome in our friend, Kenny Ducey, not just because he's a Fordham alum like me, a fellow Fordham Ram, but because he's an absolute stud when it comes to breaking down the game of tennis. Anytime we have like a giant bracket that can be pretty overwhelming for people, you gave us some really good thoughts on two of the quarters. Let's kind of just wrap it all up here. Like who, just your best guess, who wins each of the four quarters? Who advances to the final? Who do you think wins the French Open? We have about a minute left for this. It's always important to remind me how much time there is left because I will never shut up. Uh, I think Carlos Alcaraz comes out of quarter one, and that's a pretty easy call for me. 
Quarter two, Novak Djokovic. I was minus 160, which I thought was ridiculous before the tournament. I'm going to back him because, again, his draw, Fakina in the third round could be a little tricky, but that's really all the players that he's really going to have to be bothered by. Uh, and then I'm going to say in quarter three, uh, I probably have Kasparu come out of this quarter, to be honest. He hasn't had a good season. I think Taylor Fritz can beat him. But if you, you want, you, you put a gun in my head, Kasparu quarter three and quarter four, I'm going to stick with the big the big gun, the, the big upset, Aslan Karatsev. I really believe it. He, he has a great, great path to the final. He's beaten Zverev before. Uh, he had he had owned Medvedev historically. He's beaten Sinner. He could beat any one of these guys in this draw, and I think he comes out of it. I really do. I think he's really hot right now. He's getting hotter, and he's already made a slam semi, so there's no mental hurdle here. There's no best of five hurdle. This guy can go out and do it, and, he, and he's, he's in his prime right now. So fire him up. Ten, ten seconds to go. What's the final? Who wins? Ten seconds. Uh, I'm going to say Alcaraz over Rude. That's going to be a, a pretty un... I, I hate to say that, but it's going to be Alcaraz over Rude. What about Alcaraz Five over Fritz? To go. Yeah. yeah I was, I, it could be. I want it to happen. I, I, Alcaraz over Runa would be the best one, right. but I think, gun to my head, Rude, is, Rude has the talent on this surface, and I think he's starting to play better. From the comfort of their homes, You Better You Bet presents Golf Bets. Now up to the tee box, it's Nick Costos, Ken Barkley, and Tyler Morales. All right, Tyler, you're out of the lab. Memorial and Euro bets, go. All right, I'm going to work a little backwards here since we got kind of some interesting news. So I was going to bet against Jason Day in the head-to-head -head market, and now about 20 minutes ago, it, uh, he was announced that he's dealing with like a bone bruise in his wrist, and the prices are starting to move on the head-to-heads against him, so... I had Morikawa against Jason Day. If you, he'll be paired up against a good golfer, so he might withdraw if his wrist isn't feeling good. So I took Morikawa over Jason Day, and prices are moving on all those head-to-heads. So Grio won last week. I was sad. What do we do this week? We fade him. So I got Harris English over Grio, and I got Cam Davis over Grio as well. So those are my head-to-heads, and then we're going to go to the outrights here. So I thought about just taking Scheffler around, but I went Patrick Cantley at 10-1. Uh, why is Cantley 10-1? He hasn't won since August. Well, I'm about to tell you. Last 24 rounds... Second off the tee behind Scheffler, second in ball striking behind Scheffler, second in tee to green behind Scheffler. Statistically, he's been the second best player in golf over the last few months. Also helps that Rom has only played like once. And now he's playing at a golf course where he's won before the redesign and won after the redesign. And he has a win in the third place. Since they changed the golf course last four events, ninth, 21st, fourth, and third, he is hashtag trending. So we like uh, Patrick Cantley there. Uh, Jordan Spieth, 40 to 1. Spieth disappointed big time last week. Nobody wants him. Cool, I'll take him. His around the green game has been so bad, and that's by far his best attribute. And he's made a mockery of this course around the green in the past. So I think we're going to have a huge bounce back spot here. He's not going to be off the tee a lot. A lot of these guys are going to be going iron. We don't want the uh, driver in his hands. So this is a good buy low spot for uh, Jordan Spieth. And then I have two Kims as a uh, long shot. I think that was like a DMX line, but I don't think he was talking about golfers. So I took two Kims. Siwoo Kim at 55 to 1, and Tom Kim at 66 to 1. If there's someone who could do what Billy Horschel did last year, basically play positional golf and be accurate, it's Tom Kim. Statistically, he's one of the best second-shot golfers on the planet right now. He just can't make a putt. It's actually horrible. Tyler, need the rest of the bets in like 30 seconds, only because we're yep. running out of time. Sorry. No, I'm, I'm, done, I'm done after this. So if he putts average, he can win. So those are my outrights. And your, the European bets, hopefully I can pronounce these guys. Ewan Ferguson, 45 to run. Robert McIntyre, 25 to one. And Jorge Campillo at 28 to one. <laughs> I thought this, I mean, those were like relatively easy to pronounce names. I thought it was expected, I hope, like, I, hope I can pronounce this. Miller. Robert McIntyre. <laughs> like Robert, yes, but, oh, you, you nailed oh, it. Oh, Bobby, Bobby Mack. Okay. Oh, Bobby uh, Mack. Return of the Mack. Memorial bets for you, Ken? Oh, I just bet Scheffler. That's the only thing I bet. Uh, I bet Spieth and Hideki, both at 40 to one. Love the speed love this week, and I'm contractually obligated. I also really like uh, Jorge Betsy Campillo in the, in the Euro event. Yeah. Uh, I was more of a Ewan McGregor guy, or Ferguson, <laughs> whatever. <laughs>